Hey folks, welcome back to ACRP Bonsai. Uh, we don't always have gigantic, high price pre-bonsai to work on. Uh, and so in this week's episode, we're gonna take a look at these smaller maples that I've got here and show you how we can create some pretty dynamic compositions using even humble material. So what I have here on the right-hand side is a purple expressing seedling that I've been growing for three years. I collected this in New York in the spring of 2021. And this particular seedling out of all the ones that I collected is strikingly beautiful. It has this really nice purple shade in the summertime. What I plan to do is allow this to extend quite a bit this year because I want to take some clones off of it. I think it's uh, got such a nice set of characteristics that others might want to use it as well in the future. So I'm going to try to make some more of these. Over here, I've got the only truly successful Deshojo cutting I took a few of these over winter and unfortunately a lot of these suffered in the transition from winter LED lighting out into the greenhouse. I'm hoping those snap back so there should be some more and I will of course take some midsummer as well. But this little uh, cutting here, I've already got a little bit of silicone wrapped aluminum on it. We'll take a closer look later but I've gotten some nice movement into the strongest lowest branch on this cutting. There's another few nice shoots coming from one node higher on the original cutting. And we're going to probably just let those extend this year. And then lastly, in the front, we've got this Nishikigawa. So this is the uh, corking bark or pine bark um, Japanese maple here. There is one additional cutting here. I think it's still alive. These buds have not pushed yet. So we're not going to forget about this little guy when we do the repotting. But in all of these cases, today we're going to be creating root over rock compositions. Um, I think that's really great uh, when we're working with non-grafted stock to potentially highlight the natural non-grafted rootstock. I don't know if there's going to be any characteristic difference on this to shoujo, but I think it'd be really cool to create a root over rock just because it's such a unique rare cultivar. And let me grab off camera here. I've actually got this Afghanite stone. This is a really beautiful gemstone. It's got these bright blue veins through it and then also it looks like at the top that's some sort of an iron pyrite, so it's got that gold color. It's kind of got that red, gold, and blue, and white. This is like the ultimate America bonsai here. So I want to pull this out and do a root over rock on this Afghanite stone. And then additionally, I've got this stone as well. It's a really nice rugged stone. You can buy these stones in the aquarium section of your big box pet store. Uh, they either are like this, or you can also get the dragon stone at a fairly decent price, and those work great. This has a really nice character to it, but the muted colors I think will go well to highlight the corking bark of this pine bark Nishikigawa Japanese maple. And then this last tree, like I said, the seedling that I've been growing for a few years here, I pulled it out midsummer and flopped it on top of this stone. So we're gonna have to do a reworking of that and make sure that those roots are in really good contact with the gemstone. And I'm gonna just let you guys see when we uncover this, what we're working with here. Okay, folks, so before we get started with the tree, we want to make sure we have our pot set up. I'm going to go ahead and pour some larger grain pumice down here at the bottom to get our aeration slash drainage layer. Just a nice thin layer there to make sure water is not pooling at the bottom of the pot. Then we're going to put down a layer of triple red line Akadama. And this is some recycled Akadama. There's a little bit of organics in here and a little bit of medium pumice. Uh, no big deal. Get that moss out of there. We're just going to get that down there as a base layer. So with this Akadama here, we're bringing the soil surface about halfway up the total depth of the pot. And we'll be able to potentially push some of the roots down a little further into this. But this is going to be about where we start. Here's our stone. And we want to be able to highlight all these different colors. We've got this nice gold area here and then the blue. And we're probably going to have the stone in the soil about something like that. So we're going to try to position the tree somewhere here along the top. Probably not at the very apex of this rock, but somewhere along the side in one of these nooks or crannies here. Push that to the side. All right, so the next thing we're going to do is pull our little Deshojo out of this pot where I've had it developing. I took this cutting very late last fall on second flush growth. Oh, this is really in there. 
we can get that to release. Okay, oh, this is amazing. We seem to have a nice profusion of roots here. I've got this in mostly perlite. I'd say about 75 to 80% perlite with a little bit of Akadama. And then there's still some of the sphagnum moss from the original container I had it in after I rooted it. Uh, later this summer, after the first flush of growth hardens off on our maples, I'll be doing some demos on how I propagate these specialty variety Japanese maples. All right, let's see what we're working with here. Definitely need to get these loosened up. Well, it looks like this root over here on the side has been the most dominant. So we're gonna assess this and decide what we wanna do. This root over rock, it's not 100% necessary that we have a perfect nabari, but we definitely want to get these roots wrapped around that rock while they're still young enough, get them nice and snugly attached. Let's get some of this other stuff out of there. And you can see this really extended root growth has happened because of our use of the perlite. And it works pretty much the same way as pumice, except it's a lot lower cost and it's a lot lighter weight. So really this is actually a great method for anyone who's propagating and planning to ship trees around the United States. Your shipping costs can be a little bit lower. We're working with a few main... And then the next thing we're gonna do is we're gonna... I've got this movement in the branch, if you guys can see that. I've got a nice twisting movement and I want that to be leaning off to the side. Let's see if we can get these roots down around this rock somehow without damaging them. It's probably gonna be best because they are coming downward quite a bit to get these roots situated over the tip of this rock here. So I think we're gonna be happy somewhere in here. So I'm trying to twist these roots. I'm going to change angle and get you guys a nice front view of this. During this process, we don't want to have our spray bottle very far away. We'll be able to keep on top of these roots and make sure they stay moist this entire time. Because this is a new cutting, we are not focused on trimming any of them. We're going to keep every root we possibly can. We're going to try to minimize any root damage. All right, so what I'm doing here is I'm trying to work these roots all around the stone and get them right up against it the best I can. It's okay if one wraps around here and then ends up just dropping down into the substrate here. That's okay. This root here, I'm gonna try to get down into that crack. And it's okay if some of these roots overlap a little bit. Really just doing everything we can to get these roots down in close contact with this rock. This is a very young cutting, so we still have a lot of time for these roots to develop. There are all these kind of odd roots up here. We may need to reduce some of those, but I'm also okay with making some root pruning decisions in the future. I'm gonna do my very best to keep all of these intact. So we got this nestled down in there pretty well. This is gonna have to be tied in place here. These ones are going out straight. This one here, we want to try to get a few of these convinced to grow around the back side of the rock here. Let's see if we can get a few more of these upper roots. We're going to convince those to go this way. All right, that's great. Off screen, I've cut myself a little bit of this sinew, it's just a natural fiber rope. And I use this to do some of my Native American crafting. You can also use twine or raffia, whatever you've got laying around. Anything that's nice and soft. Another interesting feature of this stuff is it's waxy. So it doesn't tend to get real waterlogged. Just doing one soft knot there. Coming around the back side here. Now we want to hold this tree in place, but we don't want to be too rough because we don't want to choke these roots. I've done this procedure with wire as well, and that can work pretty good. We definitely want to try to keep this root, if possible, running down the face of this rock here. There we go. 
around a few times here. Pull those roots in. Drop this root down and against the stone. You see how we're just applying real gentle pressure here. Not forcing anything. You want this root to get down, get on down there. I want you to bury on down into that substrate. I'm going to come under this rock here, see if I can get a slightly different leverage point. See if I can kind of push that down into there. Make sure that that tree is really hugging this rock and we're going to allow these roots to thicken for a few years so that should work fine just like that there we go Back this way down around here and because we have these tension points on the edges of the rock these major is the area that pulls the roots in is a little bit more gentle. All right. I think we're at a pretty good point there. Tuck that in. simple wraps back in on itself but yeah no knot here we're just knotting the rope in on this no knot we're just tucking this back in on itself all right this is pretty good it's nice and stable I want to position this so that these roots have plenty of space. I have a lot of these roots on this side, so I'm going to actually rotate this to allow these a little more room to get on down into the substrate here. There we go. That's going to be nice. Nice spread there. Plenty of room for them to run. And this Akadama is super dry, and I don't want these roots to dry out. So the very next thing I'm going to do is water this in. So I'm going to pop off camera for a minute, do a quick watering in the sink, and I'll be right back. All right, so we've got those longer roots watered in, but we still need to protect these roots that are up higher on the rock. So the next thing we're going to do is pull out some of that screening we use for the bottom of our pots. And we're going to create a little fence, and I'm just cutting myself a nice strip of this. We're going to build ourselves a little fence. Looks like we're going to need another piece to go around the back side. And we are going to wire these together. All right, there we go. Let's get the other side together. All right, so now we've got a nice this ring here. I've got it a little bit lower in this back section so it can tuck underneath the tree there. So let's see if we can get that up and over our tree without damaging any of these delicate branches. There we go. All right, great. And it looks like that's going to work perfect. I'm going to go ahead and get that down in there. Make sure it's got soil all around it. We still have some fine roots there, so a little bit more Akadama. 
let's get that down and through there. So these roots are not going to have to reach very far to find some nice moist hakadama. And then we're going to cap it with some large grain pumice all the way to the top. There we go. And that's looking pretty good there. And it's going to go all the way up, make sure we're covering it up. I'm going to come over the top of this with some nice water moss to make sure we have a nice humid environment for these roots to extend. All right, I'm going to go ahead and water this in one more time, and I'll be right back. To make sure we don't lose our humid environment around these delicate new roots, we're going to add a layer of moss over the top of this. And this moss is also going to help the pumice from falling out of our little cage here. Spin this around so you all can see the side view here. So we've got this set up nicely. Now, we did do some wiring on this strong branch here, and it was positioned at a different angle. So eventually, this branch is going to be the primary trunk of our tree, and I want to bring this back over the top of the rock. I want to be very delicate here. The last thing we want to do is to damage this super important branch. And I'm going to twist this a little bit more here. So now this is going to be great. It's got a nice twisting movement, and it's going to have this trunk come back over, and it'll cascade almost over the other side of this stone in the future. You can already see that the nodes are extending quite a bit here, so eventually this may get cut back, but for now we're going to let that run as long as it wants. We have a really long straight node right here on this original wood that we used for the cutting. Now that I think about it, I'm kind of cool with allowing this branch to hang low. This might create a nice effect. So let's consider this branch off to the side something to help thicken and grow those roots we're probably going to eventually take this as a new cutting in a year or two, or we may air layer it if we allow it. That is the original Gangster OG to Shoujo here, not the Shin to Shoujo. So this is a really delicate, classic variety of Japanese maple. That red doesn't hang on as long as the Shin to Shoujo, but I think there's something really subtly beautiful about it. I love this yellow-green veining in the center of the leaves. It's just really quite nice. As you can see on these older leaves, they've already started to turn green. And the rest of that red will continue to fade out until it's a nice hunter green color by midsummer. All right, so again, we're gonna prep our container here, with a little bit of large grain pumice. Got our thin bed of Akadama there. It's gonna be our rooting layer. And then here is our nice stone. You know, I was really lucky on this tree. I only got one or two leaves burned really badly in that transition from the indoor LED light out to the greenhouse. So I've been really watching these carefully, but I did have some damage to quite a few of my rooted cuttings over the winter, unfortunately. We gotta be careful of this little guy. This is another Nishikigawa cutting. We don't want to damage it. Let's see if we can pull this up out of there. Oh yeah, we have got a nice set of roots on this tree here. See that that sphagnum moss hangs on pretty well. It's okay if some of that stays there. We don't want to overly work these roots. We don't want to overdo this. These are some really nice fibrous roots. Our little guy in the corner is doing well. Boop, boop. Oh, this is beautiful. going to do everything we can to position these little fine roots down into these crevices. So we are going to use this twine again. Get this knotted around here without hurting anything. Remember we can gradually tighten this with successive winds. We don't have to get it all in that initial knot. Just need to get it in place. The amount of time and effort we put in now is going to pay us back as we get these roots right where we want them. Hold that string in place here as we go so we don't lose the tension we've already built. This front root here is really strong. I need to apply firm pressure to get that to hold in place. down 
down here. Lift this up a little. I want to get those roots right down in there. Against that rock. Through here. Alright, I think we've got this pretty well positioned. The roots oriented down through these cracks here. It's going to look really nice in the future as this grows in. I don't want to allow these roots to get dry. Make sure we're spraying this off nice. Keep those roots nice and moist. Let's get these roots spread out. Nice lateral orientation. So let's get a little more Akadama in there. All right, folks, I'm going to go off camera for a minute and get this watered in. All right, let me go get this watered in, and we'll be on to the third and final tree. All right, this last one is going to be a doozy, folks. Last summer, I decided to do this root over rock. I did it right in the middle of summer prior to the second flush of growth. I was like, you know what? Let me just try this out. So it was really sloppy. We're probably going to have a lot of work to do to get this thing behaving. I basically just pulled it up out of a normal pot, and I slapped it on top of this gemstone. And honestly, it thrived. But like I said, I collected the seedling in my yard in New York in 2021 in the spring. It's been probably my favorite seedling out of that batch. I started out with maybe 10 or 15 of those. There's another little one that I had in a forest planting that I've removed from the forest planting because it had a nice, small, interesting colored reddish leaf. And so I'm going to grow that one out and possibly propagate it as well. So that's a great thing about finding these seedlings. You know, people hate on it. You know, it's going to take a lot longer to get it to a bonsai stage, but you can find some completely unique traits on these seedling trees. All right, I see another wire coming around here. So let's get that loose. Yeah, just some loosely wrapped wire. That's not the worst approach. Let's try to snake that out of there without damaging anything. Oh, looks like I shoved a bunch of sphagnum moss down in here. I don't know why I did that. So, you know, if you're thinking, okay, here comes Pat, this guy who thinks he's an expert. Believe me, I am just experimenting every step of the way, and I've only been doing bonsai seriously since 2021. I got back to the States at the end of 2020 from my tour in Japan, and I was like, you know what, I got to get into this bonsai thing. So I've been head first ever since diving deep right into it so you know if you see me doing something wrong feel free to get in the comments section i'd love to share ideas and continue to hone my skill okay i'm going to see if i can pull this out of here without hurting anything all right here we go folks i'm just going to set this aside for now while we work this out and i can also see that i used akadama instead of pumice so the roots had no strong incentive to reach down and they continued to grow right up at the top here. That's okay. I think even though it was an unsuccessful root of a rock, what we've done is at least got some of these roots to grow somewhat in the shape of this rock. And so we should be able to get it to form to this. And you can see here I've got a, it's actually a really large amethyst stone and on the outside there's no amethyst out here this is that kind of green coating you'll see on some of the larger pieces just like a oxidized copper look to it you know this is actually formed around this rock quite nicely maybe it wasn't the worst idea ever to use akadama you know we always see that like handful of really large roots circling around a rock but you don't really see too many that are almost you know turtle backed over the top of a rock so maybe we can achieve that here i don't know if there's much we need to do this root down here is really strong so really, aside from continuing to encourage this to be really close to that rock, I don't know if we really need to do much else. I'm going to try to get a little bit of this soil out from underneath here. 
make sure this tree is pressed solid down into that rock. And it seems to actually have a really solid contact there. Here we go, folks. This is what half a year vascular growth will do. I think these roots have probably at least had a 50% increase. I see what I was doing. I was trying to use that sphagnum moss to shove these roots back inside of here. I don't know if that's gonna work too well, but I think what I can do is wire flexible tubing here. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna organize these roots just a little bit, push these roots back in there like that. Get those wires. There we go. And we're going to wrap those gently around the back. And then the back side here, we're going to gently twist these together. And hopefully that'll stay. There we go. Just hooks like that to keep them in place. These roots guided back in there toward the surface of this amethyst. And I'm going to do one more piece of this wire and see if we can persuade these roots to stay up against the back wall there. One more piece of this tubing here. All right, so we don't want to be too hard on this, but we got these pressed back fairly close into the stone there. I think that's going to be enough to get this going. The tree is, I mean, the tree is not going anywhere. This thing is pretty much adhered to the top of this. I am going to pull a little bit of this sphagnum moss out because I would like to encourage these roots to extend rather than growing in place. So we're going to allow a little bit better oxygen exchange up toward the top. That should encourage these roots to grow downward a little more strongly. All right, that's enough. Let's not overdo this. The tree is in place. A really nice trunk starting to develop here. And we're gonna just repurpose this Akadama. Oh, looks like I got some other stuff down as an aeration layer there, that's okay. I'm gonna put that in there. Let's get our tree up in the pot here. Make sure we have roots somewhat spread out here. We'll encourage them to go every which way. Direct these ones over this way a little bit. This soil hasn't broken down at all, so there's no reason we can't reuse it. Now we've got to build a cage again. got this all filled in with large grain pumice. We're going to get this tree packed with a little bit more fresh moss and a thin layer of Akadama around these roots and then we're going to encourage this to grow again through the spring. I just collected some this fast growing moss off of my, a couple of my other trees in development and we are just going to create a nice cap. What do we got here? <laughs> I got one of Megan's little characters here. We can leave that guy there. Is this a poly pocket? What is this thing? Anybody know what this is? Some really nice dense moss here. <laughs> it's almost like too dense. Yeah, see how thick that is? We're just gonna wrap that right on over turn this around yeah and that's what we're going to do we're going to just wrap this moss right up in there i doubt this tree will even skip a beat it's going to just keep on growing right through spring let's get another piece wrapped around the back here there we go nice carpet of moss moss is like one of the best things for bonsai now this stuff here, you gotta control it to make sure it doesn't grow onto the trunk of the tree too much, but a little bit of antibiotic activity, as well as that moisture retention. This moss really does wonders on developing trees. You just pack it all in there. All right, so that's kind of what we're looking for here. Another little bit right there. I'm gonna come through here with a little piece of this aluminum wire. I'm gonna wrap that. Let me come around so you can see. Got it on this flap here. I'm gonna come right over the top of that moss. Make sure we've got this held in place, just like that. Right, that looks nice. Get that twisted on there. I'm going to come over the top, down through there. Yeah, let's go ahead and hit right into that corner there. Bring that up just like that. 
a nice matrix here. It's going to stop this from eroding. So we're coming right over the top here. There we go. We've got these two crossing here. Let's twist these together. There we go. And then a nice firm foundation there. I'm going to bend this tip in and just stab it right down in there. All right, so see, we've got a nice solid matrix here. Our tree is well wrapped. None of this is going anywhere. So I'm going to get this back out on the bench and we will see you guys after these leaves open up. All right, so here we are after about a week and a half of our little root over amethyst leafing out. It is growing really well. Get this nice color. I'm allowing a few of these to extend because I plan to do some rooted cuttings here. Please excuse the firing squad in the background. There's a gun range down the road here. But yeah, that thing is looking great. This tree didn't even skip a beat. So let's check in on our other root over rocks. Here's the Nishikigawa. Again, we rooted this over the winter. I think it believes it's autumn, so it's dropping a few leaves. That's okay. There's some strong buds under here, and these are going to flush again probably in a few weeks. Our Deshojo up here, we went back and wired these branches to make sure that they're all in a nice open position. And the leaves are continuing to green up. This tree is doing phenomenal. The terminal tip here has continued to grow. It's looking beautiful. In contrast, so we've got the Deshojo there, and then this is Sagan, so you can see this color contrast here. Our Oridono Nishiki mother tree is finally leafing out. It's really like three to four weeks behind the rooted cuttings. And I have to admit, I'm sad to say, I told you I wouldn't lie to y'all, this one cutting in the back looks like it is going to wither and die. I can see the rot down here on the base of the tree. So that's okay. If this one dies, we'll make more. We did a very hard root prune on it, and so sometimes that happens. All the other trees are doing great. We'll get back to this Oridono Nishiki forest on a future episode, but dang, look at those leaves. They're just gorgeous. I just love this cultivar. If we look back here, we've got a few leaves that are nearly pure white. Look at that, that's just outstanding. Thanks for joining me on another episode of Acer B Bonsai. Please like, subscribe, and get in the comments section. Let me know what's going on in your Japanese maple garden. Have a good week.